You know, it's kind of been the week that was, really. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> this, uh, this talking period is obviously takes on its own life each and every year, and it, it brings, uh, you know, different things and challenges. One thing it doesn't bring is a lot of sleep. Um, you know, it's, it's a long process, and, you know, you go through, you know, many, many, many different conversations, obviously, once you can start talking to other people's, you know, UFAs and stuff like that. So, um, you know, obviously, you have conversations with your own, uh, up until that point, but um, obviously bringing back uh, Nate was uh, something we're we're very excited about, and, and obviously he worked with us on the uh, on the salary side of things. wasn't qualified, but you know we had obviously uh, conversations with him as we uh, went along. Well, again, I think he uh, he fits the style of play that we play. I think there was really good continuity right from the get go with um, you know with uh, the coaches. There's a lot of trust level in him. Uh, played a big role, uh, stepping right in right away. Obviously, when uh, when Josh, uh, you know, was hurt and uh, came in and and you know fit in seamlessly on the ice, fit in seamlessly off the ice. And uh, you know, again, I think it's uh, you know a, a good opportunity for him to play in a system that works for him with coaches. I think that you know um, he believes in and, and believe in him and uh, an opportunity for him to take his game to the next level. Well, you never really know until the end. Obviously, you, when when they're your own players, you have um, the ability, obviously, to have you know conversations long, you know, up to that. So, uh, we we kind of obviously knew the parameters of, of different things and and uh, what people were looking for with the individual players, and um, you know, you you prepare for different things accordingly, and, and you make different decisions as you go. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, excited for obviously for their opportunities in front of them. Uh, you know, free agency has has yielded some, you know, some obviously some good uh, benefits for them. They've earned that right. Um, but can't thank them enough for you know the uh, their their time here. Uh, Tyler, you know, coming over in the trade, just an exceptional exceptional person. That uh, you know him and his family, um, you know, wish them all the best. And, and uh, you know, again, uh, these are tough things when you're on the other side of them. But we. We knew uh, we knew probably a year ago that um, you know that the, the, these were you know potential things that, that could come into play given you know the, the fact of uh, of what's in front of us. Um, what you don't know again, and I preach it and talk about it all the time, is what the cap is going to be and how much is going to go up. So you know you you have to make your decisions once you get all the relevant information. And Brandon, you know Brandon believed in us. Um, you know when he signed as a, as a uh, free agent, I think that there was a lot of people maybe that looked at him and said, okay, what's he going to bring to the table? Uh, but credit to our you know our scouting staff and and uh, you know for for believing in him and credit for him for you know believing in us. We believe that you know we we gave him a good opportunity here. He was a big part of this team and and he's going to be missed. But uh, again, congratulations to him. Yeah, you know, there's there's other things that uh, you know we've been working on. It's um, you know again, it, it's uh, every you know every free agency period or talking period takes on a life of its own. So you know there there are some other you know depth moves or some other moves that uh, you know hopefully we can announce as uh, as the days go on. Um, ben Schraub would be the one UFA that I guess you get to line with another team. Is, do you think you still be in talks with him, or is that ship kind of sailed? So again, you, because he was our guy, um, you know, you've had a lot of conversations. So you know it. it uh, uh, Again, the positions that uh, you, you know you you find yourself in as time goes on, you know you have to evaluate them at the at the different times. So, um, you know, sitting here st or standing here right now, it's hard to say exactly you know where things would go. But um, you know he's uh, you know we, we we made some offers to him earlier in the process, and you know we'll see if, if different things you know come to fruition. But it's again, it's it's something you'd have to evaluate at uh, at any given time. Well, again, it's part of the CBA. I've said that before. You know, certainly something that uh, you know you you always you know like everything you always prepare for the the unexpected, and you're always in the background, you know, thinking about different things that could happen or might happen. So, you know, again, it's not shocking that it did. I was part of one uh, in 2010 with the Blackhawks, and you know, again, you know, you you, you kind of evaluate it and and uh, you act accordingly, and uh, it's kind of like anything, like a hockey trade or anything like that. You're always 
you know, you're always evaluating things. And, and uh, when it comes to an offer sheet like this, I'm sure, you know, again, I've listened to the press conferences of the respective general managers. And, and uh, you know, like Don said uh, in his, he'll, you know, as a group, they'll, they'll take a look at it and, and then they'll respond accordingly. Again, you know, um, the, 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 biz, the business side of this game is business, and, and uh, you know, again, you know, certainly, you know, like he said, obviously, he's got a decision in front of him now to to make, and there's a contract that's in place. So, um, you know, and, and you know, he obviously is, you know, the one that didn't negotiate it, but he gets a chance to, you know, make that decision. It's hard to say. You know, I, I don't really. You know, no. Again, like it's every situation, every individual is different. Um, every team, you know, handles things differently. So, you know, what this means one way or another, you know, I, I'm not a fortune teller. Just a bigger picture question, Kevin. Just uh, assuming for the moment there's no other signings and obviously after the season comes to be too much to suggest, but do you feel confident that with with some of the younger guys and guys coming up through the pipeline that you would have the ability to infill if needed for some of these openings that have been created? So we haven't had that uh, kind of opportunity or that uh, for younger players to really step in uh, over the last couple of years. We've been, you know, real fortunate that um, you know we were able to create a roster that was, you know, real solid. Um, you know, certainly on the back end with veteran players, players that uh, you know have established themselves. Um, but you know, it, it wasn't so long ago that a young player named uh, Josh Morrissey, you know, came and you know toiled in the American Hockey League and found his way to training camp, and lo and behold, he became, you know, obviously the player that he is. So. Um, th this game ever evolves. I think for us right now, we, we felt, you know, for two years, you know, that, that we had an established core that remained the same. I stood here, you know, uh, obviously uh, at the end of two seasons ago, said, you know, I'm going to do my darndest to keep that whole group together. We pretty much did, you know, knowing that, you know, we're going to try and take a big swing, knowing that, um, you know, again, the, uh, the salary cap the, the, uh, or the, the, the rises in salary of a lot of the players was going to make it prohibitive to keep all of that group together beyond. Guys, it's not just two people here. You know, there's other. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah. Well, Sammy Niku obviously came in in a tough situation last year and played. Uh, you know, during the year when uh, we had our injuries, unfortunately, every time that uh, it was Tucker's or there was a chance for maybe for Tucker to come up, he was injured himself. So, um, you know, but, uh, you know, he has experience as well. Tucker does a couple of years ago. He was, uh, um, you know, uh, very impressive in, in the games that he played. And, and he's, you know, that much more mature. I watched him play just prior to him getting hurt right at the end of the year at the American Hockey League level. And I thought his game was just outstanding. So, um, you know, these players have to earn it. And, and, you know, we don't play hockey for a while yet. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of summer that, uh, you know, still will be going on. And, um, you know, again, uh, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see, I guess, you know, if there's other conversations that, you know, do happen um, throughout the course of summer through, you know, either maybe through adding some things on free agency still or, or maybe through, uh, you know, through trades. I think, uh, again, every one, every individual's situation is different. So, um, you know, again, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be certain nuances, I'm sure, that both sides are going to feel they like or don't like. And, and um, you know, you'll sit back and evaluate and look at it. Yeah. You know, again, I think I was certainly you know, pleased with how both of them look when you get your eyes on them uh, in our, you know, in, in our midst. Now, understanding again, it is development camp. It's not uh, necessarily you know a full evaluation of, of where they are and where they're going to fit. But um, you know, you're you obviously, I think they made good, both made good impressions in their own right. Obviously, Chibasov's a little bit older. Um, you know, has uh, you know has the pro experience at the KHL, and I think there's going to be a, a little bit of an adaptation to the North American game. You know, when it comes to you know the stops and the starts and, and the little nuances that, that that make the KHL different than you know than pro hockey uh, over here. Uh, and then with Luoto, he's a um, you know he's someone that again is is, is a younger prospect that um, you know from all our reports. You know, as a young, hungry, hard-working player that you know is just chomping at the bit to want to make his way into the National Hockey League. Both have good size. Both can move. 
both have good hockey sense, you know, from uh, from from what we've been, you know, gathering. And and uh, again, they're good, uh, I think, value adds for us and uh, that our scouting staff, you know, highly recommended. And kudos to them, you know, again. They came over here understanding that you know there's there's no guarantees. They've they've got to earn their right to, and and to, to get to whatever level they get next year. Yeah, you know, again, uh, the type of player, you know, you have to, I guess, you know, find the type of player that fits. You can, um, you know, certainly. Uh, you know, again, you, you'll evaluate what you have lost, but there's also maybe opportunities, and you see who, who from within. You know that uh, you talk to the coaches, and, and you say, okay, who, who from within might be someone that can, you know, get that enhanced role and 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 maybe grow that part of their game. So uh, there'll be evaluation both ways, whether it's you know coming from the outside or whether it's coming from the inside. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, generally it might have worked to make that, but I think, you know, again, with the salary cap not maybe rising as much as, uh, you know, everyone maybe anticipated, I think everyone is kind of approaching it with a little bit more of an open mind and seeing, okay, exactly, you know, what might or might not happen here. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a busy time. There's, there's no question about it. Um, you know, today is, uh, or this week is kind of that culmination of, you know that I think everyone takes a deep breath and you know assesses did I get the guy that I wanted didn't I get the guy that I want you know where do I go from there and just on that point Kevin given the 81.5 million dollar cap is it possible once a lot of these big names and big ticket guys get signed that everybody does maybe reevaluate or take stock and can the market almost close on itself pretty quickly and, and maybe some of those bargain deals become available that you didn't think would necessarily well, again, I think that um, you know players, um, you know agents, teams, um, you know all at this time have uh, you know going into this week have certain ideas or parameters or expectations, um, and you know for for some teams, you know maybe they didn't get what they want, they still have you know availability. For some teams, maybe they don't have availability. So, um, you know, again, you, you do see a huge flux of players signing today, movement today, in those regards. Um, you know, generally, you know, the players that kind of go beyond this, the, the, the signing side of it generally slows down. Um, I guess that's just by nature. But, um, you know, again, sometimes there's some, you know, really good, uh, you know, players out there that for whatever reason, uh, you know, just didn't uh, didn't work for someone on uh, the week prior to, uh, to July 1st. I just had one more, but yeah. I'm looking at the makeup right now of the depth cap situation. Is this just a bit of an anomaly that you look at? There's not much of a Guys that are either on ELCs or like a deal like Nathan Bolio signed today, or guys that are in the four, five plus million, and you don't. I mean, Adam Lowry would be maybe one exception. Is that an unusual thing from your perspective to see very few guys in that like one to four range? Yeah, I think it's it's, it's certainly an evolving you know type of thing. I think that um, when you're in a situation like ours, where you have a, a, a lot of good players that you've drafted, developed, and grown through your system either acquired or you know have decided to retain um, you know again y you every everyone every organization structure is going to be different based on you know what they have within their own roster and then over time it's going to evolve if you have you know really good young players uh, you know obviously the system you know that's in place here right now um, you know it, it, it uh, tends to give them some money uh, a little faster than it used to um, you know several years ago so you have to adapt and and uh, but sometimes you know it make you have to make real tough decisions because of that and i just think that again you know in, in the cap world um you know uh, fan bases you know kind of have to look at it evaluate and understand uh, you know that uh, um, you know when a person gets to free agency the, you know days like today can be you know pretty pretty harsh but then in some other aspects um you know it was it was the opportunities that we had for some of our younger players over the course of the years um, you know, has gotten us to that point today. You know, like all the younger players that, you know, whether we're, we're, we're they're, they're RFAs or whether they're, you know, um, you know, players that are still in entry level. You know, the opportunity, the growth that they've experienced in our organization has helped us get to this point.
I think that's the same question, obviously, every year that you get. You know, like it's uh, uh, you see a team, you know, get a player. You know, certainly everyone's going to say, well, you know, they, they've gotten better. There's no question. Well, um, you know, again, we, we've got a good young roster, and our roster, you know, generally, you know, should get better year over year just from our, um, you know, growth, you know, as as players. But hey, this is a competitive game. We have uh, one of the toughest divisions, you know, uh, obviously, uh, as we've seen having the Stanley Cup champion. Uh, you know, come out of it, um, you know, it didn't get any easier, no question.